good morning to all myself professor tm divakar working as assistant professor in department of electronics and telecommunication engineering in sharad institute of technology college of engineering so today i am going to cover the norton theorem so what is the statement of the norton theorem so it states that any two terminal linear network with current source voltage source and resistances can be replaced by an equivalent circuit consisting of a current source in parallel with the resistance and the value of the current source is the short circuit current between the two terminals of the network and the resistance is the equivalent resistance measured between the two terminals of the network with all energy sources are replaced by their internal resistances see this is the statement of the norton theorem so i will explain about the statements see any two terminal linear networks already we know that what is the linear network a network in which the circuit elements like resistors capacitors inductors should remains constant irrespective of the change in voltage or change in temperature that circuit is called as a or that network is called as a linear network in simple way linear network means the circuit elements should be constant at any cost if you change the voltage if you change the temperature that is called as a linear network so norton theorem is applicable to the linear network but which is having the two terminals and in that circuit if there is a current source if there is a voltage source and the resistances that all can be replaced with a single equivalent circuit and that equivalent circuit there should be a current source and that current source should be parallel with the resistance <coughs> sorry so in that norton theorem there exists a circuit or there exists a network in which there, there should be one current source and that is parallel with the resistance now let us come to the value of current source so the current source which we are using in the network equivalent network is the short circuit current between the two terminals of the network means the two terminals of that network we should we should have to short circuit and the current which is flowing in that short circuit that is called as a norton current and the next one thing is that the resistance that is the equivalent resistance that should be measured between the terminals of the network but all energy sources are replaced by their internal resistances means if there is a voltage source you can replace it by short circuit and if suppose if there is a current source 
you should replace it by open circuit while calculating the total equivalent resistance. So, this is the statement I will explain once again what is the Norton theorem. See it states that any two terminal linear network with current source, voltage source and resistances means there is a network and in that network there are a current source, if there are a voltage source and if there are resistances. So, we have to replace that current source, voltage source and resistances into a equivalent circuit and a, and that equivalent circuit consisting of a only the current source and that current source is in parallel with the resistances. Next thing we have to find out the value of current source and the value of resistance. So, how to obtain the value of current source? So, we should have to short circuit the two terminals of the network and the current which is flowing in that short circuit that is called as a network Norton, Norton current and the total resistance is the equivalent resistance and that should be measured between the two terminals of the network. It is also called as a open terminal network <coughs> and in this case we have to take one precautions that if there is a if there are energy sources means if there is a current source we should have to replace that with the open circuit and suppose if there is a voltage source we should have to replace that with a short circuit while calculating the resistance ok. So, let us come to the problem in deeply you will understand see here here I am giving one example here. So, find the current passing through 6 ohm resistance using the Norton equivalent circuit ok. So, here is a circuit given. So, in that circuit there are energy source which is a voltage source is available and there are the resistances. So, before converting the Norton's equivalent circuit we should have to calculate the current passing through 6 ohm resistance from the original circuit. So, after obtaining the Norton equivalent circuit and obtaining the current through 6 ohm resistance from that Norton equivalent circuit it should be same as the current through 6 ohm resistance from the original circuit. Then we come to know that then we come to say that this Norton theorem is a proved. So, let us find <coughs> so in that example so we have to calculate the current through the 6 ohm resistance. So, 6 ohm resistance is given here we just observe the diagram here. So, we have to find out the current through 6 ohm resistance that is the I 6 here I am given. So, let us find the current through 6 ohm resistance. So, for this we have the formula that already we know that the current division in parallel circuit. So, you can use this formula that is I 6 I 6 means the current through 6 ohm resistance is equals to what is the total current flowing through the circuit into the resistance of the opposite side divided by the total resistance. So, in this circuit see here I 6 is equals to I t into 10 upon 10 plus 6 10 means this is the opposite resistance of 6 ohm resistance 
upon the total resistance means here n plus 6 that is a 16 ok. So, before we know that what is the total current flowing through the circuit. So, we do not know what is the total current flowing through the circuit and it is not given in example also. So, we should have to calculate that total current. So, whereas, the total current is see what is the total voltage the here total voltage is 20. So, 20 upon C phi u is in series with the 10 ohm and 6 ohm. So, 10 ohm resistance and 6 ohm resistance both are parallel to each other. So, here, here I am here I have uh, I am giving this one that phi u plus 10 parallel to 6 ohm resistance. So, after calculating we get the total current is 2.2 ampere. So, let us substitute the value of I t in equation I 6. So, therefore, I 6 is equals to 2.285 into 10 upon 16. So, after calculating this one we get I 6 is equals to 1.2 4 3 ampere. <coughs> so, the total current flowing through 6 ohm resistance is 1.43 ampere this is from the original circuit and what is the voltage across the 6 ohm resistance. So, we know that the ohms law that V is equals to I into R. So, the value of resistance is given here. So, we should have to calculate the voltage across 6 ohm resistance and we know the current through the 6 ohm resistance that is 1.43. So, voltage across 6 ohm resistance that is V 6 ohm is equals to 1.43 into 6. So, this is 8.58 volt. So, the voltage across 6 ohm resistance is 8.58 volt. Okay. So, current through 6 ohm resistance and voltage across the 6 ohm resistance we have calculated from the original circuit. Now, we should have to cross verify these values after obtaining the Norton equivalent circuits. Now, we should have to draw the Norton equivalent circuit. So, in the So, we know that the statement of the Norton equivalent Norton theorem that after to obtain the Norton equivalent circuit we should have one current source that is I n that is Norton current and that current source should be parallel with a total equivalent resistance that is called as a R n that is a Norton resistance. Okay. So, we need to find out two things first one is the Norton current and it which is called as a I n and second thing is we have to find out the total resistance that is called as a R n that is a Norton resistance. Okay. So, let us find the Norton current. So, to find the Norton current first we have to short circuit the two terminals of the network that is C here in the original circuit we should have to remove the 6 ohm resistance and simply we have to short circuit that terminal ok as in the figure I have given. So, and the current through that short circuit terminal is called as a Norton current it is given in this figure ok. So, the magnitude of the current in Norton equivalent circuit is equal to the current passing through the short circuited terminal. Now, we have to calculate the I n. So, I n is equals to 20 upon phi u. 20 is the total voltage upon resistance value of resistance is a phi ohm. So, therefore, 4 ampere is the Norton current which is obtained from the original circuit by applying the rules of the Norton theorem. Okay. Next, we have to find out the total resistance that is the Norton resistance. So, 
to obtain the Norton resistance, the things we have to do is that we have to open the terminal of the network and there is a condition that if there is a energy source we should have to replace with the internal resistances means if there is a voltage source we should have to replace in a short circuit and if there is a current source we should have to replace in a open circuit so in this original circuit it is given that there is a voltage source and we should we should have to short circuit this 20 ohm resistance and then you can calculate the Norton resistance which is called as a open circuit resistance. So, the Rn is equal to after short circuiting the 20 volt voltage supply the resistance the resistance 5 ohm and 10 ohm are parallel to each other. So, therefore, Rn is equal to 5 into 10 divided by 5 plus 10. So, that is equals to the Rn is equals to 3.33 ohm. So, this is the total resistance of the network. Now, you can draw the Norton equivalent circuit here. This is the specific diagram we should have to obtain that there is a current source and we obtain the value of current source that is a 4 ampere. You should place the value of ampere current is 4 ampere and you should put the uh, Rn that is the total uh, Norton resistance is in parallel with that current source that is 3.33 value we have obtained this value and we have put this value in parallel with the 4, one, 4 ampere current source and this is a 6 ohm resistance that is from the pre, uh, original diagram we have again uh, considered here. Now, from this equivalent circuit we should have to calculate the current through 6 ohm resistance. <coughs> Sorry. So, therefore, the current through 6 ohm resistance as you know that as we know that the value uh, the formula of the calculating the current through 6 ohm resistance is total current flowing through the circuit into the opposite resistance of 6 ohm resistance is what 3.33 upon the 6 plus 33 that is the total resistance that is the it comes uh, now already we know that the total current total current flowing through the circuit is how much 4 ampere because here it is given the current source that so the 4 ampere is the total current which is flowing through the circuit that is I 6 is 1.43 ampere and which is the same value as we obtained in the original circuit. Now, you can calculate the voltage across 6 ohm resistance from the Norton equivalent circuit. So, this is also 1.43 into the value of resistance R uh, resistance 6 ohm that is equals to the 8.58 volt and this is also the same value as we got from the original circuit and here we prove that the Norton theorem is a correct. Okay. Next let us come to the another example determine the Norton equivalent circuit for the circuit shown in figure. So, for this case we have to just determine the equivalent circuit. So, this is the original circuit is given here 50 volt voltage source is given 3 ohm resistance is there it is in series with the 4 ohm resistance and the terminal A and B these are the two terminals of the circuit. Again here I am repeating that to calculate or to draw the Norton equivalent circuit we should have two important points one is the I n that is a Norton current 
and which is obtained from the short circuit terminal of the network means to obtain the northern current we should have to short circuit the terminal a and b then we have to find out the rn that is the open circuit resistance at terminal ab so while calculating rn we should have to short circuit 50 volt short circuit 50 volt voltage source okay so let us find see here in the diagram it is given that in is in parallel with the rn what is the in short circuit current at terminal ab means we should have to short circuit a b okay and the current flowing through the ab is nothing but the in next one is the rn okay it is called as a open circuit resistance at terminal ab means we should have to keep ab as open and in this case we should have to short circuit the voltage source because in this case the voltage source is given so we should have to replace that with the short circuit suppose if there is a current source then we should have to replace with the open circuit okay next see to find in okay as i told you that ab should make the short ab so here i have shorted the ab ab and the current through ab is nothing but a in so you can calculate the in okay as in the previous example we know that how to calculate the in that is in is equals to total voltage sorry total current upon now here it is given that in is equals to see here 50 volt upon resistance is 3 ohm that is a 16.7 ampere is the Norton current okay now the Norton resistance you can calculate the Norton resistance see here as in the diagram I have given here a and b I kept as a open okay the arrow marking here I have given that it is in inside side inward direction that is means you should measure you should measure from open circuit ter terminal of the circuit okay and suppose see here the 50 ohm 50 volt voltage source is short circuited so while coming from the a points okay so current is dividing here means current okay so, so 3 ohm and 4 ohm both are in parallel to each other so to calculate the total resistance okay 3 into 4 upon 3 plus 4 so total resistance is equals to 1.71 ohm so as we calculated in and rn just you put these values into the original circuit okay so original circuit means Okay. So this is the original circuit that is the IN is in parallel with the RN. So put the value of IN here and put the value of RN here. We get the Norton equivalent circuit. Okay. Next point. Okay. Again we will take one more example. Okay. To determine the Norton equivalent circuit. <coughs> So once again here I am re repeating that the Norton equivalent circuit is the network or the circuit which consisting of a Norton current is in parallel with the Norton resistance. Okay? So and to find out the Norton current and the Norton resistance we know the procedure also. So, see here, you just observe the diagram here. In this diagram or in this figure, the current source is given that is a 25 ampere. So, see, in this example, there is no need to calculate the total current of the circuit. Why? Because the 25 ampere current source is already given. Means, from this current source, 
the total current flowing through the circuit is a 25 ampere you just remember this one that is the total current through the circuit just you can simplify the or you can calculate the total resistance of the circuit okay so see here the current ion is the same as the current okay means first of all to find out the ion we should have to short circuit a and b okay let us draw this dotted line shows that we have shorted this a and b okay after shorting you just see the current through ion the current which is flowing through this ion is same as current in the 3 ohm or 4 ohm resistance means here whatever the current which is flowing through the 3 ohm resistance and 4 ohm resistance so this is the 3 ohm resistance and 4 ohm resistance the same current which is flowing through the ion and that should be calculated and that should be considered as a Norton current so Norton current how you can calculate Norton current so total current as we know that the total current is 25 ampere multiply by see here the opposite resistance of the 3 ohm or 4 ohm is 2 ohm am I right ok upon 2 plus 7 7 is what here 2 this is 2 ohm so 2 ohm plus this is a pi ohm that is the 2 plus 5 is a 7 and therefore by calculating this ion we get this value 5.5 5.55 ampere means total current or the northern current in this circuit is 5.55 ampere ok. Now, you can find out what the total resistance that is the northern resistance. So, while calculating this you should see here this is the now in this example it is given here current source. So, you should replace this with the open circuit means it will get open the 25 ampere circuit will get open. So, after opening, so what will happen? See this pi ohm resistance, ok. Pi ohm resistance is in parallel with the 4 ohm resistance, 3 ohm resistance, and 2 ohm resistance, ok. So, see here, do not do not get confused here. This pi ohm resistance, this is this pi ohm resistance will not get considered because this will get open this 5 ohm resistance because after calculating the resistance we should have to come from the point A terminal A ok. So, we are coming from A terminal ok. So, this 5 ohm resistance this 5 ohm resistance is in parallel with the 3 ohm 2 ohm and 4 ohm resistance and these 3 ohm 4 ohm and 2 ohm resistance are in series with each other. So, 4 plus 3 plus 2 is nothing but 9. So, for you parallel 9 ok. So, using the formula for you into 9 upon 5 plus 9 that is the total Norton resistance is equals to 3.21 ohm ok. And you just read all the circuit this is the final circuit this is the value of I n as we calculated I n is a 5.55 ampere and total resistance is equals to 3.21 ohm resistance. Okay. So, with these three examples, I think you should understand the Norton theorem. Thank you.